We continue the portal development diaries today. I'm going to revisit a training module I introduced to you in FM20. Yes, we're also going to talk about progression scores, progression factors, and all that wonderful stuff here on today's show. When it comes to football manager, you want to get the best out of your players. You want to develop them optimally. So there are things that we need to do. Of course, I think it's about time we revisited something I wrote about in FM19's guidebook where I spoke to you about the training model, right? So I introduced you guys to the Dutch training model and also introduced you guys to certain things that you might not have been aware of. So I think it's time we revisited that. Uh, things like progression score. Now, when we go into the game of Football Manager, we want to understand how our players develop. Now, I wrote about this in FM19. I explained progression score. This is an actual thing in Football Manager because what happens in the game of Football Manager is that a player's progress comes as a result of two things, training progression and match performance. These are two main things that affect him. So when you look at players when they're young or when they're growing to, through the academy, right, the moment they become visible players, they're affected by your training facilities and the coaches that you have. If they're winning lots of games, it affects them, right? So their morale goes up, they bring their best during training. And of course, we've got attributes, attributes like professionalism, determination, ambition, all these things feed into their training progression, gives them a training rating. And then, yes, that's the first part of the equation. Then the second part is going to be match performances. So some of these players are going to be playing games, you give them playing time, they do well in those games, then the, those performances also move into the factor. It's called progression factor because all this combines to create what is known as a progression factor. Then that is the chance, like, you know, if you put it in a very simple terms, right? Okay, this guy's going to get maybe 20 attributes because he's done really well. However, there's also something called chance. Now, this is something, uh, as I call the progression score, because essentially it's a luck factor. So even if you've won all your games, um, he's doing well, you've done everything that you can do, you could be unlucky. Now, the progression score is actually a multiplier in the game uh, between 1 to 5, and it can also be negative. In other words, you could have a player who's injured, right? So bad luck for him, he got injured, his attributes take a knock. Sometimes players go up, sometimes players go down. What we're more concerned about is the long-run development of players. We want them to be continually going up. So we do our best by making sure that our facilities are good, we give the players as much game time as possible. We don't overtrain them. And we follow a kind of a pattern in the game when it comes to their development. So how does this play into Football Manager? Well, if you're developing a youth team, make sure they win lots of games, even as a youth team. Because if they win lots of games in the youth team, they're going to do well. And this is going to affect their training ratings. Their training ratings will start improving. They're doing well in games. Maybe one or two of them are going to develop the right way. Now, this next step, we'll talk about the cycle for development. If there have been plenty of clubs that follow the Dutch model, the KNVB is the professional organization that oversees the content structure and development of soccer in the Netherlands. The total vision for youth soccer was first presented to the public in 2001 as the master plan of youth soccer. And they're still using this uh, master plan that they have. The Dutch model believes that all youth players can be nurtured. They will go through a process, right? They start as young as um, six years old and they move all the way to 18 and they divide players into age groups and sometimes the player can jump age groups if he's, you know, technically good. So here, I'm going to break it down into three simple terms, right? They, they, they call it the thick model in uh, in in the Netherlands. Um, I'm, one of the two words is actually Dutch, but I'm going to translate it as technique game intelligence and communication. These are the three broad areas we want to focus on when it comes to youth development. So when a ch child is growing up, they want to focus on technical attributes. Then also game intelligence. They need children to be aware of the situation unfolding on the pitch. They need to know where they're supposed to move. They're supposed to be able to read the play, understand their roles. And finally, communication is something very important to the Dutch school because they need players to communicate to each other as to what is happening on the pitch, right? what their roles are going to be. Sometimes this involves even switching of positions and being familiar with what to do in different kinds of positions. When it comes to the Dutch model, there are certain things that are supposed to be embedded before they even turn 18. right? Phase one is the youngest phase, right? 
Here, they learn ball control, technical skills. And then in phase two, functional play repetition. This is the beginning of their mental attribute development. By phase three, they're supposed to learn about with and without ball movement. They're supposed to recognize game phases, a lot of mental development in phases one, two, and three. By the time they get into phase four, they could be 16 years old. Here, they are beginning role specialization. They try to work on their positional familiarity. These are things that you guys are familiar with in football manager as well. So by then, there's a lot of team play going on. There's match practice going on for these boys as they learn what they're supposed to do within a functional formation. And finally, phase five. Phase five is actual game time, right? 18-year-olds will be playing 18-year-old competitions. 16-year-olds might be playing in 18-year-old competitions. It, you know, a kid can go from phase one to phase four if he's talented enough. They can jump complete phases. Sometimes when we are playing the game of football manager, you could easily have a youth that is 17 years old that shows the capacity to play in the main team. Fine, bring him through. What I want to do when I play the game of football manager is I want to define how my players play. To do that, I'm very, very specific, right? So when I go to my under-19s here with Porto, they are always playing the same tactic, right? So they've been playing this youth system um, that my Porto players are using, and they use a slightly different version from the main team. The main team has their own system, which is slightly different. The main team is all about keeping control, high possession numbers. This is the tactic they've been, they've been using. Notice there's a difference between the two tactics. One does whole shape, one does counter press. Whereas you look at the youth team's tactics, it's completely different. They're using, they're doing counter press, counter. This is more intense. They are expected to work the pitch. Here, when I created this system, I was very, very specific about what I wanted my players to do. So when we go into the training of all the players, you will notice as well, uh, for the squad, they've got specific training um roles and duties that I've given them to do. So I'm expecting them to play these roles and duties. And a lot of the times, I'm actually monitoring their growth in terms of attributes, in which direction are they going in. This is the thing about me and youth development. I can't play youth development without attributes. I need to understand how my players are developing. Some of you might be enjoying that mode. I enjoy this mode a bit more. So for example, um, I've got players here like Jao Pedra. Now, Jao Pedra is a youth player. Look at his training ratings. The boys' training ratings are all very high. One of the reasons why their training ratings are high is look at their performances so far. They're playing really well. I mean, there was a bit of a knock here, but they've been playing quite well in their own league. They're top. In the UEFA League, Youth League, they're doing well. They're qualified for the next round. And what I tend to do when I'm playing a, this, uh, when I'm managing a youth team, is I'm also very focused on who's playing looking at who's been playing what games, right? So the problem with the UI for football manager is they don't tell us all the games they've been playing. So you, you need to check, right? There's one way of checking. They are, they are in three competitions here. They're in the Campeonato Nacional the Division. Um, you can easily come in here if you wanted to. You can come in here and then go to competitions. Uh, this is a national division. So some of them have made 16 appearances. You can customize this view. Um, here we can customize this view and um, use this. So we've got 16 appearances here. So I've, it takes some time. You'll have to do it. Um, there's no there's no shortcut to this. Um, so here we've got players and I'm looking to make sure that these players have played enough games, right? So I tend to go into the games. There are players that I handpick and I, I look at their development and I pay a lot of attention to these players and I try to make sure they get a lot of game time so they lead the line some of them are like fabio amaral you know i look at his tactic i'm usually playing him in this tactical system uh he's training as you can see he's not training to be an inside forward on attack on the left side right but in the last game um if i look at the tactic you can come into player click on this and you'll see how many times he's plays an inside forward so amaral whenever he's playing as an inside forward on this side He's played 90, he has had 19 appearances, has scored 21 goals, has an average rating of 7.90. So he's actually playing really well in this position for the under 19s. So let's look at the players here. Jao Pedra, right? So let's look at his training development. So if I come to training here, you can see I'll arrange it by the training score. He's 9.3. In terms of his progress, he's done really well. We've been hands on with his training. Um, and then looking at his attributes, 
right, since we started training. We've only, I think it's been half a season. You can see from here, August, September, October, November, December, January. He's already had improvements in crossing, right? He's got one attribute point for crossing. He's got improvements in most of the other attributes. Here, I focus on mental development. Uh, we can see his mental development is a bit low. So we want this to go up a lot more. So when it comes to training, we've got inside forward agility and balance. This is going to go up. After six months, I move him to this because we need his uh, anticipation, concentration, decision-making to go up. You can't do re Concentration comes from general training, right? So we will do attacking movement, off the ball, anticipation, decisions. Now we switch him to this so that uh, I get a balanced development in the player. So every six months, I change, right? So I will look at players to see that they are de uh, developing the right way. When it comes to football manager, we have to remember that attributes have a kind of a priority system in the match engine, okay? So when you're playing the game, a player needs to be aware of what's happening before he can physically act on doing that job. And finally, the job itself. So if you break it down, the first job is thinking about what he's supposed to do. The second phase is physically putting him in that self in that position and finally pulling it off. So the mental attributes of a defender will be anticipation, concentration, and positioning. So he has to be able to know where he's supposed to be. Then the second thing will be, does he have the strength to win the header or jumping reach? And finally, if he needs to do the header, does he have a hitting attribute? And then, or if it's a tackle, it's a tackling attribute. So when you look at the game of football manager, Mental, even mental attributes are important. So when I'm looking at my players, I'm focused on mental attributes. Like for example, here, Bernardo Ferreira, he's on defensive positioning. His height is only 1.8. Actually, I don't have a long-term plan to make him a defender because, you know, he's 1.81. Uh, I don't, I doubt if he's going to get any taller. Now would be the time for me to decide on his future, right? So I could easily move him out and get him to play in a different role. But even as a defender, he will learn tackling, marking, anticipation, concentration, decisions, positioning. This could work for him in a DM position, right? So here we go. What we'll do is we'll leave it this way. But what we have to work on is his work rate. So work rate is pretty straightforward. All you got to do is come into endurance and he works on work rate. So now he'll do work rate as well. Now, if I notice a lot of my players need work rate, which is can happen, Right? You might go through the entire team. One other way is to put the attributes up and looking at all your players to see if work rate is needed. Then you just come in. Then I will modify my training schedule. So here we have a youth schedule for the youth team, right? So it's got quickness, attacking. So what I could easily do, this is a full week because there are weeks when we don't play. So here I can just come in here and just change this to endurance. So we'll do one endurance session, one quickness session. So this is their acceleration and this is going to be their work rate. So we created the use schedule, we saved it. We go to the um, under 19's training calendar and I'll just make a slight change to some of their schedules. So here we've got a week like this and I'll come in here and I'll just stick this in. So now if they've got endurance here, what happens on a week like this? Same thing, we'll just stick this in. For youth here, it goes endurance. This quickness, I'll remove it. So they don't have to do this. They just have to recover from that one game that they played. Uh, they might as well go and bond with each other. And then we'll come in here, do another youth. All right, so it runs, as you can see now, there's no game. So we get uh, quickness in here, endurance, and then they'll, they don't have a break. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you're like me and you don't want them to have a break, that's fine. Otherwise you do this, switch it over, um, and you can give them rest here. And maybe recovery, because they played a game. And we can roll it off, roll it on. I mean, you can't have everything. I like match practice because match practice is actually the only one that gives us role development. So you can see here, um, individual roles over here, right? So you can see that they also develop individual roles, but there's a weight, 60, 20. What I like about match practice is that there's no weight. It's focused on individual role development for everybody. Right, so it's 100%. You work on your roles, plus you get some tactical familiarity. It's the best of both worlds. I would recommend creating your own view. So here was stats, competitions for the junior league that you're playing in. And then you put in all the stats, especially appearances, match ratings, whatever other information that you need from there. And then what you can do is you can track whether how well they've been playing and whether they've been playing enough games. Like for example, I'm going to pay a lot of attention to Nono Freitas in the next couple of weeks to see whether he gets a chance to play. 
So that's what I would do. Um, it's important to keep on top of your youth development. Uh, we've got, the, I'm very happy with the development of our youth team. I mean, it's been exceptional. Most of these players are playing really well. One of my superstars is this guy. Uh, if you look at his progress, you know, we've been very hands-on with his development. And uh, I've given him like some game time with the senior team. And within the last couple of months, he's shown some improvement, especially in mentals. We're going to keep training him uh, inside for the agility and balance. I want his balance to go up, right? This is a priority. I don't want him to... I, I, he's going to end up playing as an inside forward eventually. His finishing is coming along. His composure is coming along. He's only... What's, I don't know. How old is he? He's he's a kid. Seven, I think he's only 17 years old, if I'm not mistaken. 16 years old. So this 16-year-old kid came through our academy and he's going to be a superstar. He's already scoring loads of goals, right? 24 goals for the team. And we've given him an appearance in the senior team. I like to monitor them. So you can see the under-19s are going to be playing a game on the 4th of February. We're going to keep a very, very close eye on this match. So now we've got a match against Benfica coming up. It's actually the um, semi-finals of the Alliance Cup. So what I plan to do is I plan to give my youngsters a chance to play. So we got a Mota. We're going to add one more under-21 to the starting 11. These are two best players. Uh, Susa is he. I'm going to just ask him to be a poacher. Uh, there's no point asking him to be a pressing forward. It's one. Uh, it's a, he's not ready for that kind of a role. So we're just going to leave it like that and see how we do. And immediately, I'm all I'm doing is I'm paying attention to these two players. Benfica are doing quite well. Grimaldo with a free kick. Oh, that's not going to threaten us. His ratings are 6.4 and 6.4. I'm going to change his role. Um, get him to be a pressing forward on attack. See how he does. Make him run side to side like how is the boys are doing in the senior team. Now the ratings aren't that fantastic. I'm fine with that. Okay, and encourage him some more. Okay, this maybe will drop it a bit more. We won't work ball into box. We're going to drop the passing directness. Uh, tempo slightly lower but the shot we're going to just drop the passing and um, the tempo uh, we want to start applying pressure to them stepping yeah we're stepping up more this is a very aggressive setup from us oh we've got a, I don't think it's a penalty yeah. oh it's a penalty okay alright Galino with the penalty auto score a penalty Okay, I didn't expect that. So, come on as well. Goes back to the goalkeeper. Take, we take that back now. Marcelo finds Zaidu Sainuzi. Nice pass. Using his left foot to play that pass. That's why I wanted to keep playing there. Zaidu again. Yep, nice pass. Galeno, nice to Wendell inside the area. We get our second goal. Some, yeah, 6.3 is still average, right? So, it's not bad. At least the boys got a chance to play. But Susa played well. Showing that he's got the potential to step up if we need it. Right? So, Amaral has not played two senior team matches and Gonzalo Sousa just made his first appearance. I'm eventually going to give uh, chances to a lot of these players. Right? We'll bring them on for games, 15-20 uh, minutes with the senior team and then slowly help their progression because we are playing quite well um, and we'll continue, we'll continue monitoring their um, development. We are through to the Alliance Cup finals and we're doing quite well. I mean, now we brought two more youngsters. We've got uh, Carrasco and Ramirez. Both of them are youngsters. The Alliance Cup is a competition where you have to play with at least two under 21s. I'm actually kind of impressed with the performances of Carrasco and Ramirez. Both are under 21s are putting quite a performance. And this kind of performance only um, does, does fantastic stuff for their developers. So now we bring on a third player. His name is Amandu Kamara. So now we have... Eight, three of our under 21s playing in the match. So he's another one. So that'll make it three. And this is the final um, after beating Benfica. So Porto, I won the Alliance Cup. Not too bad. All right. The youngsters, three of them were actually playing in the finals. So I'm happy with our performances and our youth development is on track. So after the Alliance Cup, I'm still very much focused on how our boys are doing in their own under 19 competitions. So looking at um, this match, they're going to be playing this match the same time I'm leading the senior team out. So this um, this game is being played today. So we're taking a look at how our under-19s just played, right? So I give them an instruction. It was a very simple instruction. Did they follow it? 
Well, apparently I forgot that Goncalo Sousa was striker. <laughs> I was suspended. <laughs> so the assistant manager when I put a defender up top, okay, it's the least damaging position. I didn't get me. I mean, there are no more strikers there. They are any decent. But all the other positions, he kept them the same way. Amaral on the left and Vieira on the right. Normally what he does is he likes to put Amaral on the right and Vieira on the left. I like him. I want him because you're retraining him to play on the left, right? So he's, he's coming along. So he's playing quite well. He's developing quite well. And it's again 8.6. He's definitely another man of the match for him. I'm happy. So the thing about youth development in Football Manager 23, fullbacks can improve their crossing, right? They can be a balanced personality. They'll improve their crossing. The thing here is you want to attention to detail that you need. You need to win a lot of games. You need to make sure you got all the facilities up. You got to keep your eye on the ball. And that is why I think sometimes when you're speeding through your saves, you could, you could miss a few things. I mean, who wants to be that hands-on? But that's the thing, right? Um, in Football Manager 19 and 20, you didn't have to do anything. You just sat there, wait for the wonder kid to develop. I mean, it still does. So some of them still sprout like cabbages. But the borderline personalities, they still need some attention. Fabio Amaral happens to only be a player with a balanced personality, but he's playing like a beast and developing like a beast. So I'm excited to see where he can end up. Of course, some of these players might peak right? and you might not see a lot of development. I mean, if you're, if you're the kind of person that wants to look at their PA and find out their PA is, that's entirely up to you. I'm not. And uh, it can be quite challenging. But I hope you enjoyed today's another look at the portal development diaries and you found it interesting. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. Meanwhile, you guys stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.